My statement to someone that is the victim of a patent troll lawsuit would be that um, you are completely screwed. Austin Meyer is a computer programmer and small business owner based in Columbia, South Carolina. He's also an aviation enthusiast who pilots his own personal plane. Meyer's two great passions intersected when he created a flight simulator program called X-Plane. X-Plane is a flight simulator that simulates the way airplanes really fly. Microsoft Flight Simulator used to be the go-to civilian flight simulator of choice. The problem is Microsoft Flight Simulator didn't fly the way a real airplane flew. So I decided to write my own simulator. Like most software developers, Meyer has adapted his application to run on a number of mobile devices like iPhone and Android. And this is where he first ran into trouble. I was at an air show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and I got an email from a lawyer. I'm sorry to interrupt your day, but I notice you've been sued in East Texas. An East Texas-based company called Unilock was suing Meyer for violating one of their patents and wanted damages as well as ongoing post-judgment royalty, which meant Meyer could potentially be paying Unilock for as long as X-Plane exists and is making money. At that point, Unilock could own part of my business forever. The stress associated with what I believe is this absolute lunacy could be great enough that I'm unable to run my business and my life as happily and efficiently <laughs> as I otherwise would. The patent in question is called System and Method for Preventing Unauthorized Access to Electronic Data. When you buy an app from an online store, vendors want to confirm that you've actually paid to use the software. One method is to create a database full of verification codes, which can be matched to a purchase license code. When a user runs the application, it automatically compares the license code to the encrypted database and then confirms or denies that the user has paid for the application. This is a method that nearly every application on the Android market uses. This is a method that has been in some form of use since at least the late 1980s. This is the idea that Unilock claims to own. So a patent troll is a company, a person, an individual, whatever, who owns patents but doesn't make anything and doesn't sell anything. Julie Samuels is an attorney and the Mark Cuban chair to eliminate stupid patents at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The patent trolls have got a business model that works quite well for them, unfortunately. They go after a company who's actually practicing an invention, who's selling a product, who's offering a service, and they say, we think you're infringing our patent and we're going to sue you. They know the right amount of money to ask for, just less than it would cost to litigate, just enough that it'll probably hurt the target, but the target can afford it. And, you know, most sane business people would rather pay the patent troll to go away than engage in litigation. Unilock president Brad Davis declined an interview request, saying, it's our policy not to comment regarding ongoing litigation. But a statement on the Unilock website reads, Unilock is in the business of finding big ideas. Look at many ideas, pick an outstanding one, patent it, commercialize it, reap the rewards. One, when the patent was filed, it was not a unique idea. It had been used for seven years. Two, Unilock didn't invent the patent. They bought it at a bankruptcy proceeding. And so those are two facts that you can use to evaluate for yourself what I think about Unilock's idea that they're bringing new ideas to the field. Most patent trolls don't actually you know, come up with the inventions themselves. Most of them have bought the patents. If what we really want to do is to incentivize innovation, to incentivize job growth, to help grow the economy, to come up with newer, better products and, and technologies, then that's not what we're doing. The economic damage caused by so-called patent trolls is staggering, with researchers estimating that tech companies pay out at least $29 billion a year to the trolls. And that isn't counting off-the-record settlements. I will not simply give somebody money that endorses the idea that they should sue people for doing something amazing. And while patent trolls represent a huge flaw in the US patent system, Samuel says that the problems go much deeper. You can't separate the problem with the patent troll from the problem with software patents, because there are hundreds of thousands of software patents floating around that are really broad, that are really vague. A lot of them end up on the market 
and they're bought up by patent trolls. And the broader and vaguer the patent is, the more dangerous it is in the hands of a bad actor. Yale researchers found that the government is issuing more than 40,000 software patents every year. That's more than 100 software patents a day. Samuels is optimistic about the chances of reeling it back in, thanks in part to something called the SHIELD Act. That's a fee-shifting bill, which essentially says that in certain cases, the loser pays the legal fees. People are really receptive to this conversation, and that's great. That has to do in no small part with the success the technology community saw in the SOPA and PIPA fights of 2012. I think that a lot of policymakers are afraid to end up on the wrong side of technology and the technology community. In the meantime, the fate of Austin Meyer and X-Plane hangs in the balance. All I can do is put my foot down to try in some tiny, tiny, tiny little way to make a statement that it must be stopped at some point.